Hi there, welcome back. The Fusion Particle tools are very powerful and flexible for making all kinds of 2D and 3D visual effects in DaVinci Resolve. Today we are going to create a particle dissolving effect in DaVinci Resolve. You can download the free template using the link in the description below. Once it's installed in DaVinci Resolve, you can apply it to clips in the timeline. and adjust the parameters in the inspector to change the dissolving styles. Instead of dissolving the image, we can check the reveal image option to reveal the image. By default, it dissolves the image horizontally, changing to vertical will wipe off the image vertically. For this demo, let's change the direction to horizontal. The dissolve width is used to define the size of the wiping area. A wider wiping area will keep the particles visible for a longer time before they are blown away. To change wiping direction, we can enable the reverse wipe option. The next four parameters are used to adjust the wiping timing and speed. When animation time is set to zero, the wiping runs through the entire duration of the clip. If we change the clip duration, the animation also adjusts automatically. Shorten the clip or extend the duration. We can change the animation time by setting this value to a number in frames. For example, 60 frames, which runs for 2 seconds. Use the time offset to change the time when the animation starts. The value is also set in frames. For example, change to 30, the animation will start after one second from the beginning. Wipe start and wipe distance are used to control where the animation starts and how far it wipes. For the horizontal wipe, it starts from the left edge, which is zero for the wipe start parameter. And the animation ends at the right side edge, so the distance is set to one. That's also why in this example, Nothing happens for the first half second or so. It takes time for the wiping to move from the left edge to the first letter D. If we want to change the effect so that it starts from the beginning, we can adjust wipe start to something around 0 0.13. We can also adjust the distance if needed. In this case, we can reduce the value to about 0.8 to match the width of the word. But for most of the time, we can keep the distance with the default value 1. In the particle control section, there are a few settings for basic particle adjustments, such as changing the particle size. Size variance is used to add some randomness to size. For this setting here, the particles will be generated with size from 0.15 to 0.25. Number of particles and the number variance are used to control how many particle cells will be generated per frame. Lifespan is used to control how long a particle will exist before it disappears. In this example, a particle will be visible for 100 frames after it's born. When we reduce this value, the total particles visible on the screen will be less at a given moment, because the particles generated at previous frames will disappear sooner.
The speed section has a few settings to define how fast and in which direction particles move as they are generated. If we want to see how they influence the result, we can turn off all the other forces. Turbulence Point force Tangent force As the default setting, the velocity is set to 0.01, which is very slow. Let's increase it to 0.1. All particles generated are moving at the same speed. To add some variance, we can change the variance to 0.05. Now we can see some particles move faster and others slower. As the angle is set to 0, the particles move to the right. Change the angle if we want particles to move in a certain direction. For example, setting the angle to 180 moves particles to the left. Or 90 to the top. If we set angle variance to a non-zero value, such as 60, it will move the particles randomly between 60 and 120 degrees. This produces some really cool effects. The next three sections are used to adjust the different types of forces that can be applied to the particles. The parameters are self-explanatory, and you can play with these settings to get the results you like. The forces can be turned off by setting the level to zero. Or enable the full influence with the level set to one. To see how the individual force impacts the effect result, you can turn off the other two forces. For example, to see the point force effect, we set its level to one and turn off the turbulence and tangent force. In this example, the particles are attracted to the point in the middle of the top. We can change the offset of the point. Changing the strength to a negative value will push the particles away from the point. If you want to adjust more advanced particle and force settings, open the effect in the Fusion page by clicking this Fusion button in the inspector. Expand the Effect Group node, double-click the particle node you want to change. The complete settings are now available in the inspector. We just showed the effect when it's applied to a text clip. This effect can also be applied to images in the timeline, for example, a logo. OK, we've demoed the use of the particle dissolve effect in the edit page, next I will show you how this effect is created in the fusion page. Here is a text plus clip in the timeline, open it in the fusion page. We see a template node connected to the media out. The template node is basically a text plus node. First, as you've seen in the template, we need a wiping effect to wipe off the text. Add a channel booleans node after the template node. Click the rectangle button in the toolbar to add a mask node to the channel booleans effect mask input. Select the channel booleans node, go to the settings tab in the inspector. Check the option of multiply by mask. Back to the rectangle node, change both width and height to 1, so that we have a mask covering the full image. Move the playhead to the beginning, mark a keyframe for the center parameter. Go to the end, change the center x to 1.5, which adds a new keyframe automatically. 
increase the soft edge to around 0.02 to soften the mask edge. Play the clip. We now have a simple animation wiping off the text from left to right. Add another channel booleans to the node editor. Branch the text output and connect to the new node. Drag the node to the left viewer. Make a copy of the rectangle node. Paste an instance into the editor. Connect the instance node to the second channel booleans node as the effect mask. Also check the multiply by mask for the second channel booleans node. As we have the identical instance applied to the booleans node, we get the same wiping effect in the second node. Select the instance mask node, go to the inspector. De-instance the center and width parameters. Double click to reset the center parameter. Modify the center parameter with a simple expression. Rectangle 1 center, minus 0.0.5, zero. This links the new mask center to the edge of the previous mask. Change the width to 0 0.1. If we select both mask nodes, we can see how they are connected and moved together. As we move the playhead, the new mask also moves and creates a wiping effect showing the letters within the mask area. These text selections will be used as sources of the particles. Add a particle emitter node and render node to the editor. Select the emitter node. Go to the region tab in the inspector. Change the region to bitmap, which enables the bitmap input in the emitter node. Connect to the output of the second channel booleans node. Merge the particle render node with output of the first channel booleans node. As we move the playhead forward, we can see particles generated as it wipes across the screen. But they are not rendered with the color of the text. To better see the result, we can disable the checkerboard background. Select the emitter node. In the controls tab, change color to use color from region. Change the number to 1000. Go to the Style tab. Change the style to Blob. The size control is now enabled. Change the size to 0.2. Set variance to 0.1. In the Controls tab, change velocity to 0.1. Set the angle to 30. Angle variance to 30. Play the clip. This is not bad, we have made a dissolving effect. To make this more natural look, we can add different particle forces to generate dynamic effects. Make sure the emitter node is selected, press shift space to open the tool selection window. Find and add P turbulence node. Go to the inspector, adjust the X, Y and Z strength. Now the animation effect looks much more lifelike. We can also add a p-tangent force node. Change the offset and strength to adjust animation styles. All right, this is how we create the particle dissolve effect using fusion tools in DaVinci Resolve. That's all for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.